Hello everyone, my name is Protosilaos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to talk to you about a package that I have just released, which enhances the default mini buffer experience uh, for Emacs version 28 or higher. The package is called mini buffer and completions in tandem. So the acronym is MCT, but you can also call the package MCT.EL. So what I want to do in this video is demonstrate MCT, how it works, what is its uh, basic functionality, and explain uh, the rationale for uh, developing this package, what is the raison d'etre, what is the reason for it to exist. And the basic idea is that it tries to uh, work only with built-in facilities to make completion in Emacs look a bit like what you get with third-party uh, completion uh, user interfaces. The main difference between uh, MCT and other interfaces is that it is closer to uh, the default completion also in terms of uh, how it behaves by default. So we will see this in practice. So let's see, uh, first of all, what we get. I will just uh, use a command that is to switch buffers, so Control xb the standard command to switch buffers, and you will see that by default uh, no completions are shown, and this is because uh, we introduce a minimum input threshold, so you have to type in certain characters before completions start uh, popping up. And this, of course, is customizable, you can uh, change that, and we will discuss this further. You can always toggle completions at any moment, so you can always show them and hide them, so it's not anything uh, that you cannot change. When you have a completions buffer like this, you can just cycle from the completions to the mini buffer. As you can see over here, now I am in the mini buffer, now I am at the top of the completions, bottom of the completions, mini buffer, top of the completion, mini buffer. So you get the idea, the, um, the completions and the mini buffer are effectively part of the same, of a unified space. And this is because the commands that are used are uh, have a do what I mean functionality. So when they uh, notice that we are in the mini buffer and we press uh, control N or control P or the arrow keys up and down, uh, they recognize that they have to go uh, to the completions buffer and when they are in the completions buffer, for example, at the top, they recognize that the next logical uh, position is the mini buffer and so on for the other motions. Let's uh, select a candidate for uh, the sake of this demo, but let's narrow, let's close this and try again. Let's type in the minimum input of commands, uh, of characters rather. So we see now that the completions have popped up automatically. Let's uh, just type in some more characters. You see now that the completions are live updated to match uh, our input. And let's type some more again. You see now that we have only one candidate left and we can just hit tab to complete it or we could also use, uh, for example, uh, we could also uh, just select it and go from there. Let's go back. Uh, the, uh, there are uh, options uh, to hide the mini buffer in the completions so that it looks more like a unified area between the completions and the mini buffer. So you can see now over here that we have the mode line. Sorry, I said to hide the mini buffer, I meant to hide the mode line. So we want to hide this mode line here. I kept it so that you can see uh, what keys I was pressing, but I think now we can hide it. So let's go to the scratch buffer where I have uh, some thing here already. So it's a customization option and we just want to set it to true to hide the mode line. And let's see now what we've got. We can see, so you can see now it's uh, indeed, it looks like a unified space. So let's uh, type in something again. You can see that we have only one candidate over here and we can select that candidate uh, right away. So this is the very basic idea, the very basic functionality of MCT. The main feature is indeed this cyclic behavior between the mini buffer and the completions. And it is what makes the two 
feel part of the same area, the same uh, space. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, a minimum input threshold that, I, that is defined to three characters by default, but of course uh, you can uh, adapt it. There is also a delay in uh, between the live updates and this is uh, in seconds. So 0 0.3 that we have over here is 0 0.3 uh, seconds. And of course you can set this to zero if you don't want any delays or you can increase it a bit. Personally, I like it at 0 0.6. And the reasoning for that is that if I know where I am about to go, so for example, if I type mod.el and then tab, I don't need to see the completion. So I can do that and I can just uh, go directly to where I want to go. And this works exactly when I am typing because I will be uh, typing something very fast. So I don't need to uh, have the completions pop up just for me to go to that single candidate that I already have in mind. So you can see that we have the uh, minimalist style, the frugal aesthetics that you get, that you get with the default uh, Emacs mini buffer. But if you are a bit slower to type or if you want to be, uh, to be a bit more deliberate, you can always wait and see the completions pop up or you can just uh, reduce uh, the threshold and you will uh, get exactly the completions popping up uh, faster and updating uh, faster. So you can select whatever you want. Uh, other, um, so let's discuss now uh, selection methods. Uh, and you already saw that I can start typing and uh, hit tab to expand a single candidate. And this is the default uh, that you do with Emacs. And this is uh, very helpful if you know exactly where you are going. But normally what you will want to do is you will want to uh, work with the completions buffer. So you want to have something to uh, select. So let's uh, have the list uh, appear over here. By the way, if the list is not visible and if you have not uh, me met the input uh, threshold for characters. If you type control N or control P, so the cyclic behavior, so those commands, it will pop the completions buffer right away. So you don't have to uh, toggle it uh, separately. So you just uh, start cycling and it works uh, right away. So if you are in the completions buffer, if you just uh, hit a key, for example, uh, here, I will just type uh, here, let's do it. I will just hit the return key and it will uh, select uh, that uh, buffer. It doesn't matter what buffer that is. And uh, you can see how that works uh, right away. Let's go back to the buffers over here. Actually, let's use another uh, interface now. Let's. Uh, uh, let's go let one second to my dot files, which I know the file paths. Let's say that you are in a file uh, path prompt. So this is the find file command and you have lots of completion C here. If you hit the return key, it will just visit the selected uh, item. In this case, it is a buffer. So it is displaying the buffer it is a directory rather, so it is displaying the buffer in uh, dired mode, dear ed mode. But what if we want to, instead of uh, visit the Emacs directory over here, what if we want to just select it and continue navigating inside of that directory? When we are in a directory like this, we just hit tab, so it's selecting it, but it is not uh, exiting the mini buffer so we can continue selecting and we can uh, continue doing this sorry we can uh, continue doing this further and eventually we go where we want to go for example here and we have that uh, already uh, so you can see that there is that method uh, as well there is another method let's uh, open the switch to buffer again where you can select an item uh, by just typing in its uh, line number. So when you are in the mini buffer prompt like this, uh, either you, regardless of whether you have the completions visible or not, you can do uh, MG twice and it will show uh, line numbers 
next to the candidates. So let's say I want to go uh, to number 14 over here. I will just type 14 and you can see that it is visiting this one uh, directly. Let's do this again, but this time with the completions visible. MG uh, twice and you can see what I have over here. Let's go to uh, number 12, which is where I was uh, before. So that works very well. Uh, when you are uh, in a completion prompt, you will notice here that it says in square brackets dot files. So that is the default candidate. So if I don't type anything, I just hit the return key now, it will uh, just use the default uh, candidate. So I can go back uh, like that. So you can see how that works. That is standard uh, Emacs behavior. But here, because uh, MCT does not pre-select a candidate, the default is, of course, selected right away. So you can just uh, do it uh, from there. Uh, we have uh, customization options. You can see them uh, over here where we have a block list and also further below we have a pass list and uh, the documentation strings explain what those are uh, but let's see it uh, in action. So a pass list means that uh, the commands in that list will always pop up the completions uh, regardless of your minimum input uh, settings. So let's say that I have one command over here, which is consult I menu. I will invoke this command now. By default, it does not display the completions in accordance with my settings. I have to type in the minimum input. So now it is displaying something. Uh, and of course, I can select it and just go over there. But let's uh, go to um, the scratch buffer. I have it here ready. Let's add the consult I menu command to the completion pass list and see what happens. And uh, now if I invoke consult uh, I menu, you will see that the completions pop up right away. I haven't typed in anything yet, but now I can, of course, narrow the list. And also the pass list will uh, ignore the delay between the live updates uh, over here. So you see that the uh, response is immediate. So you can add whatever commands you want uh, to the pass list and uh, have uh, MCT respond right away. Uh, I think it's good that uh, you are selective on the kinds of commands that you add to the pass list because there are some commands with lots and lots of candidates. So maybe you want to narrow the list uh, first. And that is the rationale for the minimum input uh, threshold uh, as well. You don't always want to see all the candidates. Uh, for example, when you are doing control H O, the command to describe symbols, you don't want to have 10,000 candidates uh, being calculated because you are searching for something specific. For example, you are searching for MCT. I don't know. Uh, and you get, for example, right away, uh, the candidates uh, over there. By the way, there is a change in Emacs 29. I am on the master branch. I am tracking Emacs Git and they have changed something here. So the annotations from the marginalia package don't work properly for described symbol and related commands. But I have to investigate this and report it uh, to the marginalia maintainers. Uh, and I will mention marginally a bit later if you don't know uh, what that is. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the basic uh, functionality that we have, folks. Let's uh, see one uh, last one over here. Let's uh, go to uh, my uh, uh, Bongo uh, playlist. Bongo is a Munich, uh, music manager for Emacs. I have videos about it uh, in the past. So what I have here is some playlist files. Those are plain text files which contain uh, paths uh, to uh, other files or directories. So uh, I have a command, a custom command of mine, where I can invoke it and it is asking me to uh, insert a playlist and it will recursively uh, select all the files implied by that uh, playlist and start uh, playing them and queue them in the buffer. You will notice, however, that this command of mine has a CRM uh, prefix, which means uh, um, completing read multiple. 
So this means that you can select multiple uh, uh, candidates and uh, operate on them. So let's uh, go to an item over here. Let's say I want, uh, I don't know, I want Jazz General, for example. I will press, instead of the return key, which is the default to select a candidate, I will press Meta and Return. So what this does is it appends Jazz General, you can see over there, to the mini buffer, and it goes back to the completions uh, buffer. So I can continue appending uh, other entries. So let's say, let's say we want to append the acoustic and the pagan Norse. And when I want to uh, finally uh, confirm my choice of everything that has been appended, I can select their last entry and just do it with the return key. So I do that Bam, and it see. selects uh, everything uh, right away. Uh, but let's uh, not uh, worry about uh, this uh, too much. Let's uh, go back uh, to where we were. So you see the idea, there are uh, lots of options on how to select uh, candidates, but uh, normally what you will be doing is hitting the return key or perhaps uh, using uh, the line numbers to your advantage to, to go directly to uh, where you want to go. Let's go to, for example, 24 and see what, what I demonstrated earlier. Uh, there is a functionality, I happen to be here, uh, there is a functionality to um, uh, add alternating backgrounds to the completions buffer and it is controlled by a boolean over here, so a toggle. Uh, so let's see this uh, very quick. Uh, so you can see over here that we have uh, alternating backgrounds, so a bit of grey, a bit of white, uh, and it's like that. It's just uh, for um, uh, aesthetic preferences, maybe it helps you uh, track the lines. So for example, here we have annotations, rich annotations. So you want to be able uh, to track the lines. But of course, uh, because this is a face, a custom face, uh, you will have to uh, change it. The face is this one over here, MCT uh, Stripe. Uh, you will have to uh, configure it in case you are not using uh, the modus themes. They are this has only been tested with the modus uh, themes. Uh, so I believe this uh, covers it. I'm not sure if there is anything else. I have written uh, an, a manual, so there is everything is documented. Uh, so I think uh, it is all you need to get uh, started. There is also uh, a sample setup. Uh, so you saw, by the way, how I was able to uh, just jump to a heading without showing the completions. I could do it slowly and in that case it would uh, pop the completions. But that's the idea. When you know where you want to go, you just do it quickly. You don't get the completions. You don't get any distractions. So you can always have both the minimalism of the defaults and the um, extra features of uh, the selection uh, methods. So I have a sample setup over here and uh, you can uh, see how to uh, set this uh, package uh, up. For the time being, it is not available. MCT is not available in any Emacs Lisp package archive, though I do plan to submit it to GNU Elpa. So this will happen within the next uh, few days, I'm not sure exactly, but expect to find it in GNU Elpa. In the meantime, you have to install it manually or uh, via straight Elp, Elpa, Borg or some other package that handles uh, package management. Uh, but uh, I also explain how you can install it, so you see there is also an installation in case you want to do it manually. It is not very difficult. It's just a few commands uh, on a shell prompt and uh, just a little bit of elisp over here and you are uh, good to go. Uh, so I think this covers it, folks. I want to uh, thank uh, Omar Antolin Camarena. Omar is the developer of Embark. Uh, you may know uh, the Embark package, I have done videos about it before and others uh, have written about it or have done videos about it. It's a very good package. By the way, let's see how Embark works uh, when we have some uh, completions available. Uh, let's uh, say that uh, we want to operate on this. Uh, 
uh, we you will see that it let's I selected the final candidate let's do it like this you will see that uh, I have made it so embark pops up below this is just a personal customization in the display buffer a list so when you are about to perform an action embark will pop up below the completions buffer so you can see uh, what you want to do let's say I want to uh, open it in another uh, buffer uh, so I did just that let's uh, close the completions so uh, I want to thank Omar uh, for the live updating functionality of the completions this was let's see do we have it live completions over here uh, I mentioned it here as well adapted from Omar's live completions over here the live completions package it is an old package uh, by omar uh, so i uh, extracted that piece of functionality and i have been using it uh, for several uh, months uh, now and also the stripes let's see the stripes again uh, it is a functionality that i took inspiration uh, from uh, stepan nemec and also from Omar, Stepan is the maintainer of stripes.el uh, and um, uh, Omar has uh, something uh, similar in Embark. Uh, I have tweaked a bit the code, it is not exactly the same. Uh, I think I have made one change. Yes, I have made one improvement so that it works with HL line mode and with the active region, but otherwise it's uh, the same uh, principle. Uh, finally, uh, in case uh, you uh, haven't uh, checked those packages yet we have sorry we have the extensions and I mentioned in the um, documentation over here some extensions you may want to check out so consult is one of them consult by Daniel Mendler an excellent package there are also extensions that build on top of consult such as uh, consult deer by uh, Karthik uh, Chikmagalur I hope I have pronounced that uh, correctly consult deer is another uh, excellent package there is embark of course uh, by Omar uh, marginalia is uh, commented by Daniel Mendler and Omar Antolin uh, Camarena marginalia is the sorry is what you get over here the annotations next to uh, the completion candidates and orderless it is a completion style that matches patterns uh, out of order so for example if i do theme and more you will see it still works i still go to the modus themes just like that uh, and alternatives in case you want to uh, you try MCT and you don't really like something about it you can just use Vertico by Daniel Mendler well Vertico is a more mature and feature rich uh, package and of course Daniel is an expert when it comes uh, to uh, writing packages so you may want to prefer that uh, instead but anyway this is a proof of concept if anything else that we can just uh, use the defaults the emacs uh, defaults and get a lot of value out of them uh, just by writing some uh, glue code basically because this is what mct amounts uh, to so that's all for now folks the the um, git repository uh, for mct is on gitlab uh, is on my GitLab instance, but there is also a GitHub uh, version. Uh, let's uh, see if we can have it uh, here, uh, MCT. So this is the GitLab uh, version. And uh, there is also, uh, let's do it like this. There is also a GitHub. So this, and there is also documentation uh, on my website. Uh, Emacs MCT. Uh, we can check this uh, very quickly. Uh, let's uh, visit this um, link. So the documentation, what I have here on my left the buffer. So the documentation is here, and it it explains uh, what I have just uh, demonstrated. So those are the links. You can check it out and tell me what you think about it if you uh, give it a try. And as I said, I will be submitting it to GNU Elpa in the coming days. 
uh, assuming all goes uh, as planned. So that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.